Hi, and welcome to Divorce Talk. I'm your host, Scott Martin. Today we're going to talk about one of the five ways to get divorced. It's not well known, yet it's gaining traction throughout the United States. It's called collaborative divorce. As you may recall, I described that in a previous video session, and now I'm going to provide you with further insight about the pros and cons of a collaborative divorce with a seasoned expert in the divorce arena. Before I introduce him, I want you to take some notes and watch this video. You're about to learn a divorce strategy that may save you thousands in divorce costs and many hours of valuable time. My special guest is Alan Frischer. Welcome to Divorce Talk, Alan. Hey, Scott. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you here. Let me tell you a little bit about Alan. He's a seasoned investment professional with expertise in financial complexity surrounding divorce. He's also a certified divorce financial analyst and president of Sage Divorce Planning out of Melbourne, Florida. And Alan began his career as a financial advisor with American Express back in the year 2000. He became collaboratively trained in 2006 and since then has been dedicating his practice to helping divorcing couples work together to equitably divide their assets and avoid the financial pitfalls of divorce. Alan has extensive training and experience in collaborative practice and is a founding member and former vice president of the Collaborative Association of Brevard County, Florida, and is a member of the Collaborative Law Group of Central Florida. He was involved in helping to design the very first course syllabus on collaborative practice that is now being taught at the University of Florida Levin College of Law. Alan has written numerous articles, he's ex done extensive lecturing on collaborative practice and is a financial neutral in the process of collaborative law. I'm so glad you're here to help teach people about collaborative divorce. Most people have never heard of it and I know I didn't when I was going through my divorce. So let me ask you some questions about this strategy called collaborative divorce. What is collaborative divorce, Alan? Well, essentially, collaborative divorce is a way to help divorcing couples divorce amicably with fairness and respect. You know, it, it's been around a while now. It's been around really since about 1980. Mm -hmm. A gentleman named uh, Stu Webb, um, who was an attorney, decided that he saw his, his practice wasn't really doing what he wanted to do. He saw that the couples were, were still fighting. Um, the, the structure was uh, emotionally detrimental, certainly financially detrimental, mm -hmm. and he himself was feeling angst in, and, and anxiety from the whole process. So uh, he wrote to a judge saying, look, I have this idea about trying to divorce, uh, help people divorce amicably with fairness and respect, and I'm going to term it collaborative divorce. Um, to his astonishment, other attorneys and other professionals were feeling the same way, mm -hmm. and uh, so now it's really become something that that has been uh, taking hold throughout the country and internationally as well uh, since that time. And uh, it's involved with numerous professionals, numerous types of professionals, namely attorneys, mm -hmm. mental health professionals, and financial professionals, because those are the three key areas of any divorce. How does it work? Where, where, do the, where are the mechanics behind it or the process? Well, um, a lot of it stems from uh, good communication with the clients. That's really the, the criteria. They have to realize that they're always going to have a relationship even after the divorce, especially if children are involved. So if that's the case, why go through a, a you know, structured system that creates um, animosity and anxiety when in fact you can divorce amicably, mm -hmm. really split things equitably, and then move on with your lives and still have good post-divorce communication? Um, the way that we do that essentially is get the couple together mm -hmm. and have the professionals guide them through the process both legally, emotionally, and financially by having the professionals involved with um, the couple throughout the whole process. And, and how does collaborative divorce differ from mediation? Because we talked about mediation in one of our previous sessions and uh, is, it, is it the same thing or is it slightly different? Um, how does that work? Walk us through that. Um, mediation is a, is a different process that can also be very beneficial when it comes to divorcing clients. But in the collaborative process, each client typically has their own legal representation. So each client will have um, their own attorney to deal with the legal aspects of the divorce. The interesting part about that, though, is that while the attorneys are representing their clients, they also 
understand the ramifications of the other client and really want to work together um, to make it happen effectively. Typically, when people go through a collaborative divorce, there are um, more assets involved. They've been um, married longer. Maybe there's children. Maybe mm -hmm. there's some other complications within the process. So um, it's a little bit more involved than what a mediation divorce would probably uh, entail. Um, typically, with a mediation, you'll have one mediator. They are not allowed to give a legal advice when acting as the mediator in the, in the divorce process. But they can structure the divorce, help structure the divorce, and actually write up the marital settlement agreement um, when the divorce occurs. Um, typically, with a mediated uh, divorce settlement, the, uh, the assets aren't nearly as much. Maybe they don't have kids. Maybe they haven't been married as long. Mm -hmm. So it's not as complicated a, a process. They may or may not bring on a financial professional. Um, they may do it themselves again if the financial issues aren't uh, that challenging or that difficult. Um, and a mental health professional typically doesn't happen, uh, isn't called in really in the mediated case, unless there are some severe um, uh, concerns with, uh, with the clients on a mental health basis. Mm -hmm. um, personally, with collaborative divorce, I think that it's really important to have the full team approach because, in my opinion, there are always um, mental health and emotional issues with any divorce. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, I think that a divorce typically is probably 60% um, emotional, 20% mm -hmm. financial, and 20% and uh, legal, as opposed to any other way around. Absolutely, and, and that's one of the reasons why we had one, on one of our sessions talking about having the right mindset as you go through a divorce that you have to treat it like a business transaction. I've been harping about that throughout our video sessions. Well, let me ask you this, Alan. What, what's the downside of collaborative divorce? Can you elaborate on that? And, and when would someone not use that? Um, well, personally, I don't know if there really is a, a specific downside. I know there are times where it's not as beneficial mm -hmm. um, and you need to go through litigation, unfortunately. But um, they're few and far between, in my opinion. Um, collaborative divorce, I think, is really the only win-win situation out there for everybody that wants to and needs to go through a divorce. Now, certainly one of the problems is, is finding, uh, you know, the couples that want to maintain good communication, you know, through the process. They, they have to be able to do that. They have to still be able to speak with one another mm -hmm. um, for their own benefit. Um, a lot of it has to do with good communication. And, and we as professionals help provide that, you know, to the couple, but they have to um, get past the revenge and the, uh, the angst and the anxieties that would not enable them to, to talk to each other. That's really the only downside. Um, sometimes people think it can be expensive, but depending upon how it's structured mm -hmm. and the, uh, the assets that we're dealing with, um, it's actually less expensive, certainly, than going through litigation. Oh, absolutely. What about time, though? Does a client really have control of their schedule? I mean, it seems to me that when you have all these professionals involved, that everyone has to get their calendars out and be able to meet and, and get the job done, it seems to me that it might take a little bit longer than what the client may anticipate. What's, what's a typical case? How long does that usually run? Um, it could, it, depending upon the, the complexity of the individual case, it could take mm -hmm. anywhere from, let's say, three months from start to finish mm -hmm. to you know, two years, depending upon, again, you know, what's involved. Um, as far as time goes, the funny thing is, with the collaborative process, the professionals are, are all there at once. Right. So we all get a chance to look at our calendars mm -hmm. and actually plan the next session with the clients right there in front of us. So, and, and sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes we have to go back and, and check our schedules. But believe it or not, it's actually very, very efficient, much more efficient than if you have to plan a, uh, a meeting with, let's say, an attorney who doesn't know what the court system's schedule is mm. and has to be made available you know, at, at the spur of the moment because they have to run and do a, uh, a court case. You know, right. We don't have that because we don't go to court. We don't have to deal with the structure of the court system. We're keeping everything out of court in collaborative practice, which is you know, one of the best uh, and primary reasons why people would go to collaborative practice. How many meetings are there normally in the collaborative divorce um, process between, let's say, the professionals and the clients? Well, again, depending upon the complexity, and when I, when I say the complexity, I mean the, uh, the complexity of the asset structure, right. if they have you know, children, mm -hmm. how long they've been married, what other relationships have occurred within, within the, uh, the marriage itself. Um, 
I it could take, you know, uh, three sessions total. Mm -hmm. It could take, you know, 13, 14 sessions. It, you right. know, we don't know until we're actually involved in the process, and that's what, to me, makes it so fascinating, uh, so interesting, and because and, uh, we, we tailor it to the individual. There's no one set, you know, uh, like Chinese food, buy from uh, uh, column A and then buy from column B. Right. It's all tailored individually to what the client's needs are. Gotcha. Okay, great. Although I like Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> What's the main benefit of going through the collaborative process? Well, you know, certainly there's a, there's a benefit financially mm -hmm. for people. Um, it will cost less, and, and statistically, we see that it costs um, typically about 30 to 50 percent less than going through a litigation that's and certainly going to court. Right, that's significant. Um, that's incredibly significant because ultimately you want to keep the assets that you've worked for all of your life. Mm -hmm. You want to keep the money, especially because of an economy like we, we currently have, mm -hmm. um, you never know what's coming down the pipe, so the money's better off in your pocket than anybody else's. And, and, and it seems to me because you have, let's say, a certified divorce financial analyst as the neutral, as the financial professional who is creating a divorce financial blueprint, as I call it, that probably this is going to move along a lot faster and the certified divorce financial analyst is going to analyze all the tax aspects of the divorce and can do what-if scenarios and help both sides see the money so nothing's left on the table. And so that, for example, if uh, uh, the husband says, okay, I'm going to give you some alimony if that's on the table, uh, and child support, maybe they can skew more towards alimony to get the tax deduction, for example. And right. there may be cost basis issues that if they went through the normal process or didn't do collaborative, that perhaps the husband ends up in getting all the assets that have a low cost basis and gets nailed on taxes in the future. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me like the collaborative process is going to look at all of those issues. Well, yeah, I mean, bringing in a, a certified divorce financial analyst in, in any process, collaborative or not, I think would be advantageous because while attorneys are good at the legal aspect, mm -hmm. they may not necessarily know all of the financial ramifications that, that have to occur, especially, you know, the tax issues that we as, as CDFAs, you included, mm -hmm. you know, um, understand and certainly, uh, you know, appreciate and can help guide the clients effectively. Um, certainly the financial aspect of, of going through a collaborative divorce is highly beneficial. But again, there's also time, mm -hmm. you know, factor. It takes less time to go through a collaborative divorce because, as I mentioned before, we're not incumbent upon the, the court's schedule. Right. You know, we can plan things effectively. And typically, before you even get in front of a judge, at least in Brevard County right now, it's about 18 months to two years before you could actually see a judge to deal with, you know, the divorce issues. It, it's funny you mentioned that. I, was, I ran into a judge here in our county, Seminole County, Florida, and she's a family law judge, and I said, how many cases do you have on your docket right now? And believe it or not, she said, 6,500 cases. And part of the problem is these family law judges all of a sudden have to do um, foreclosures because of what's going on in the real estate market. So mm -hmm. to get in front of a judge, it could take forever. Collaborative divorce process isn't for everybody. Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement. When, when is it where someone should take a pass on that? Well, there are, there are a couple of reasons why you can't or shouldn't go through a collaborative divorce. Um, one of them is if there are severe mental issues involved, mm -hmm. um, because you can't really focus on what needs to be done, and, and you really may need some therapy. And sometimes even with therapy, you know, you can then re-enter the collaborative process. I know one of my first cases, uh, we had uh, a client who the mental health therapist picked out immediately as having some severe um, incapacity and we had to we had to stop the process and let them deal with that before we can re-enter it again. So that's you know something that has to be a concern. It doesn't necessarily prevent you from having a collaborative divorce, but certainly it has to be dealt with beforehand because you're not going to be able to focus. A collaborative divorce is still a highly emotional process, as all of them are, but at least we have the professionals there to help guide you, whereas opposed to a litigation divorce, you're not going to get really the emotional um, uh, concerns from your attorney. That's not going to happen. So that would be one area if you have severe mental um, challenges. Another area is if um, there's fear, you know, from one side to another, if there's been um, abuse, for instance, in, mm -hmm. the, in the marriage, um, then it's very, very difficult to, to have good conversations with a client um, without the fear of them being there. 
and we tried to make an even uh, leving, uh, level playing field mm -hmm. with collaborative divorce. But sometimes, again, if, if the differences are so bad, if they're that fearful, then maybe, uh, and, and there's so much mistrust or distrust in the, in the process, then litigation may be the only way, and, and court may be the only way to force somebody's hand to behaving effectively. Let's talk a little bit about, going back to that subject, let's talk a little bit about um, asset size. You said collaborative isn't, we, talk, we talked about collaborative is not for everybody. Um, you know, for someone who has $100,000 in assets, probably not the way to go. Can you give us kind of a, a ballpark figure as far as assets go and complexity goes as to someone who's watching this, one of our members is watching this and they're saying, you know, I've got a lot of money, I think. Is collaborative the way to go? What, what's the uh, entry point level as far as assets go? Well, it's not necessarily just having you know, a lot of money. Let's say somebody has a million dollars in a bank account, right. but they don't really have you know, any um, challenges you know, financially. There's nothing there to really uh, worry about because they have just you know, a simple savings account for only 1%, let's say. Um, they don't have any children. Um, they've been married maybe for two years. Mm -hmm. So there aren't a whole lot of issues here that have to be worked with, although they have you know, substantial uh, amount of money in the bank. So in this case, collaborative divorce may not necessarily be something that they need. They could probably go to a mediator, you know, get a, a marital settlement agreement, decide how they want to work with the, the assets, and really not even get uh, a financial professional or a mental health professional involved in something like that. On the other hand, if they have, you know, anywhere between, I'm thinking, $150,000, $250,000 in overall assets, a home, they've been married for, you know, maybe over over 10 years, uh, maybe even less than that, maybe five five years or mm -hmm. more. Um, they have children involved. Mm -hmm. um, they've had um, some uh, contentiousness in the, in the marriage and they really don't know, you know, what to do. Um, they have questions. Then now you're talking about a scenario that uh, requires, you know, other professionals, uh, people that have the knowledge and the ability to do things in a way that can streamline the process. Now remember, it's sort of like um, building a house. You know, when you have a, a general contractor, they can basically build the house, but you don't necessarily want them to do the electrical work or the plumbing. You right. want to bring in the professionals to do that. Why? Because it's done less expensively, and it's done in a more time-efficient manner than just having the GC do all of that. Same with collaborative practice. If there are financial concerns, you want to bring in a professional, a CDFA, to do that type of work. And certainly, like I said before, when there are emotional issues, and I don't know of any divorce that, you know, emotional issues aren't, aren't a factor. Even if it's just, you know, one session mm -hmm. with a mental health professional, they can help guide you and effectively, you know, keep you on track as the divorce coach in the process. So um, when I do collaborative divorce, I bring in my team pretty much all the time. I work as the financial neutral, I bring in a mental health professional, and certainly we have you know, either a mediator or two attorneys working, you know, with the clients at, at the same time. No, that, that's great, and I love your passion for this kind of work and what you're doing serving the community out there. Sometimes, though, like in my case, I didn't even know about collaborative divorce, by the way. And what I found out was my attorney was not collaboratively trained. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers out there, if you're thinking about going down this road and your attorney saying, no, we're not going to do collaborative divorce, I just don't believe in that, maybe it's because they're not collaboratively trained, so you're going to have to go out and find one that is, if you're going to use a, an attorney. So it's very important that you find the right team and, and hook up with these guys. Right. What, one of the things I wanted to bring up is something called informed consent. Attorneys really have an obligation um, a legal obligation and, and an ethical and moral obligation to advise you of all of your options when you go for a divorce. The problem is, and, and really and truly it boils down to income for the attorneys, um, and, and it's you know, hard to say this, but a lot of them really want to put people through a structured emotional process so that ultimately they keep the, the time clock running and they can make more money, so they, they will poo-poo collaborative practice. One, because they don't think they can make as much money in the process, which has been shown not necessarily to be the case because while they may not make it on one case, they can make it up on three or four cases if they do the collaborative process. It's sort of a paradigm shift for how they, they need to think and structure in a caring attitude for their clients mm -hmm. as opposed to a, 
uh, maybe a selfish um, money incentive attitude that some of them have. Um, the other thing is that, you know, collaborative process, process does take time to learn, and being trained is very, very important because it does deal with good communication skills for both you and your clients and making sure that you care about the other side as well as advocating for your own. So attorneys need to really go through that process. And it does take um, a little knowledge of the attorneys to choose. When somebody comes to me for my um, guidance, I will typically recommend a few attorneys that they can go to that I know that I've worked with in the past, mm -hmm. that I know are collaboratively trained, and that can work on our team to help that, that couple get through it effectively. Well, that's, that's terrific. What's the main role of or the process um, when it comes to the certified divorce financial analyst in a collaborative divorce, what, what do they do? Elaborate on that, if you would, please. Well, I prefer when, when a person goes through a divorce, if they seek out their attorney first, mm -hmm. then the attorney refer them to me immediately. Mm -hmm. Because what I can do is start gathering all of the information. Before we even start having meetings, um, five-way meetings, six-way meetings with the clients, um, Wait, hold I on. What's a five-way meeting or a six-way meeting? Oh, um, a five-way meeting, six-way meeting are, are when you have the clients, each of their legal representation, that would be four, myself would be five as the financial neutral, and having the mental health professional or not there um, as the sixth person. So five-way, six-way meetings, that brings in all the professionals, including the clients. Because again, in the collaborative process, everything is transparent. We talk about everything. The clients know what we know as we know it. Certainly we'll have um, professional meetings as well to, to discuss what the client's issues are, mm -hmm. but eventually you know, the clients will be involved in all that and they'll know what we know so that we're all on the same page. Um, so I'm going back to the CDFA, what, what's their role? What's the value that they're bringing to the table? Well, we of course gather all the information. We are really the true if you want to say neutral in the process because we work with both clients at the same time. Sometimes, and this has happened once so far that, that since I've been in practice, we've had two mental health professionals, one for each client as the divorce coach is going through. But typically there's one mental health professional, but the financial neutral is really the true neutral. We work with both because we have to gather all of the assets so that we understand how to make appropriate recommendations to equitably divide those assets. And because we're not under the constraints of the courts, we can be highly creative in how to be fair and open and honest with the clients. For instance, um, if a client has a 401k mm -hmm. plan, what the courts typically will do is say, we need something called a quadro, which is a qualified domestic relations order, to split that 401k because it's ERISA guidelines and federal guidelines to make that happen. But what if, let's say the husband had the 401k and the wife has an IRA worth about the same? Well, in the collaborative process, we could say, since it's worth about the same, the tax ramifications we can, we can look at, see what the investments are. If it's ultimately similar, we'd say, okay, you keep your IRA, you keep your 401k, and boom, we're done. What the courts would do is say, uh-uh-uh, legally we have to do a quadro for the 401k, Legally, we have to do a quadro or a, a, a retirement letter for the IRA. Split those, you get half of her IRA, you get half of his 401k, and you move forward that way. It doesn't make sense. No. It wastes time. Right. And certainly money, because it costs more money to create the quadro and the, uh, the uh, retirement letters if necessary. And I like what you said about being creative. A certified divorce financial analyst can be very creative to create a fair and equitable settlement. They're creating actually what I call a divorce blueprint. It's a financial plan. Many of you have a financial plan, let's say for retirement. Well, you need to have a plan for your divorce. So they can look at all the intricacies of a divorce, the financial aspects, as we just discussed, splitting up assets and liabilities. You know, we gotta look at the debts, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. and, and certainly we don't even stop there. We project in the future mm -hmm. what may happen. As, as long as things you know, remain consistent, at least we can give them a projection saying, well, this can go out for 20 years and you'll still be fine financially. Or, you know, with this type of settlement, you may run out of money within two years. How do you feel about that? Right. So what's nice about doing this kind of work, by having that f divorce blueprint where they can see the money, then they can make a decision, yes, this is a fair and equitable settlement 
and then you can get the deal done much, much faster. It, otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to be using yellow pads and whiteboards and all of that, like in most cases, and you're not going to get the case settled as quickly, and it's going to be more expensive. One of the first questions I ask when clients come to me, you know, wanting a collaborative divorce, is what I call the decoder question. You ever see um, the old Dick Tracy movies or the Green Lantern? They have this ring, and and you have to tell the truth. You mm -hmm. know, when when you right. when you're have, when you're looking into the ring. So right. the decoder question that I have is, what would you like to have happen with this divorce? And then I sit down and listen. Right. And I don't say another word. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to extract that information from both clients because they may have similar um, uh, needs and wants. Quite often I find that they have different needs and wants. And that opens up a whole line of communication and enables me to really understand what, mean, what is meaningful to the client financially, from a, on a financial perspective. For example, um, years ago it was very, very important for, let's say, the, uh, the uh, wife to have the marital home right. to raise the children in. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays most people don't want the marital home right. because they find it's more of a liability than an asset. And, and we have to work around the current economy because of that. How can we make it affordable for one or both parties you know, to, to be able to afford the living expenses right. you know, after all of this? Sometimes it means we need to sell mm -hmm. the marital home so they can move forward. Sometimes one can live in it if they could afford it, and the other we have to figure out ways of, of making sure they have enough income to, uh, to live and, and do what they need to do in life. So it, it becomes creative, it becomes very interesting, and, uh, and I just I love what I do. Well, we can tell, and you know, I could talk with you all day about this. And in closing, I want to thank Alan for taking the time to get together with us to discuss this very important topic, collaborative divorce planning. And I want to encourage you, if you need to, go back and watch the tape again, the video here, take some notes again. We're here to help you get through your divorce, and we want to let you know that uh, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. Again, thank you, Alan. Alan's from Sage uh, Divorce Planning over in Melbourne, Florida. And you guys, stay in touch. We have more sessions coming up, more interviews, and we'll also be having some webinars and teleseminars for you to watch. Uh, so be in, we'll be in touch with you. Have a wonderful day, and stay strong. Treat your, your divorce as a business transaction. See you soon.